I'll never forget the time I was training around North Geelong with mum on the bike. My mum always rode the bike with me. And someone in, in a, like a workshop yelled out at a man, why aren't you running? And I always remember that because at the time I was walking really fast and I was brilliant. And he's saying to me, why aren't you running? Um, and that's, I'll never forget that. That is big hope here with Gabriel Blythe who forced her way into the team. First time this has ever been held at Olympic level. Saxby in that leading group and so is Gabriel Blythe, number 37. We can see her. A good story for Australia in the walk. He's still in the walk so I just stuck with it and just moved up from there. Blythe doing well at the back of that pack. You notice the action the whole time. Heel toe, heel toe. I was a hard working athlete. It's been magnificent being an Australian here in Barcelona. I thrived on the competition. As we go back through the group, I haven't seen Gabriel Blythe for a while. She was at the back of that group before and hopefully we'll get a shot of her shortly. I was competitive, fiercely competitive. We haven't seen Gabriel Blythe come into the stadium, so I can't give you a report on her progress at the moment. Gabriel Blythe, thanks for coming in. I started race walking here at this very track actually. I came down and did little athletics here in under six, so I was five. Um, and one of the events was race walking. Was I proud to be a race walker? That's a really interesting question. Do you know at times as a race walker, I've felt like a second class athlete. I, I really did because as a race walker, you're always questioned about why race walking? Why would you race walk when you can run? Why race walking? It's such a niche market and a whole lot of people don't understand race walking. Sometimes it was hard to stand up for an event that people you know didn't like it. Scott Anthony Murray Nelson is my name. I represented New Zealand at um, World Walking Cup, World Athletics Championships, the Commonwealth Games and the Olympic Games for the race walking events. I met Gabrielle um, accidentally. She happened to be on the same plane as me, travelling to the same event as me. I accidentally happened to choose a sport that accidentally happened to have a pretty cool lady in it. When people um, mocked the event or mocked the walk or um, were abusive towards me for seeing me doing it, it just made me more angry at them, um, but more determined to be more successful. What's the difference between walking and running? Walking and running, well, with walking, um, you've got to have one foot in the ground all the time. Mm -hmm. With running, you don't have to. Mm. Um, and you also have to have, your knee has to be straight as it, as it passes under your body. Gabrielle, you after the Olympic Games too? Um, at the minute there's no walk in the Olympic or Commonwealth Games for women, so oh, no. I'm a bit stuck there. But That's... hopefully um, they should be coming in in a few years. Mm -hmm. but... It's not the end of your career as far as athletics goes. Oh eh? no, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm aiming for. Right. So. It was a year, it was virtually a year out from the Barcelona Olympics. And I thought to myself, my gosh, I can make that. Geelong was an immense support for me. Um, I love Geelong. I'm a Geelong girl, born and bred. Um, people knew me, people knew my family's story. The Geelong advertiser, so the local paper, followed my journey. Just about every day I was in the paper and I'm sure people got sick of reading about me because it was, it was they called me Gabby, it was Gabby's journey to the Olympics. Um, and again, first, first Geelong person in the Olympics for a long, long, no, something like 30 years. So. Um, I had such beautiful support and I love Geelong for that. It gives me an even greater love of my own town for the support that they gave me. The lead up to the Olympics and being in the village um, and being away from home presented many challenges for me. Um, the opportunity was amazing and to live in an Olympic village was nothing that you could ever experience. But the course itself was, was a hard course. Um, the conditions, of course, imagine Spain in the middle of summer was incredibly hot. Uh, it was humid, it was probably 80 to 90% humidity. Conditions were tough. Conditions were really tough at Barcelona. Um, I thought I was ready, you always think you're ready, um, but the race in itself didn't pan out the way, of course, I wanted it to. And really, the Olympics for me were so disappointing. 
So when people say to me, wow, you're an Olympian, you went to the Olympics, yeah, brilliant, loved it, it was great, but it's always tinged with sadness and disappointment. Um, yeah. I think she was so disappointed with the race in Barcelona because it wasn't the normal race plan. When your race plan is, um, I turn up, I'm in charge, I absolutely attack my race and I have all the right energy to, to attack it with, then when suddenly you're in an event where you just don't have strength or power, it feels like you've been ripped off. I was a fierce competitor and every time I stepped on that track, I thought I was ready and I gave 110%. My greatest achievement as an athlete was that I always, always competed at my best.